All right, it's time for another video blog update. Um, I'm going to be taking a ride in the 1968 Volkswagen Fastback. There she is. And then right there in the passenger seat, as always, is Daddy's little Skeeter. What you doing, Skeeter? <laughs> no, she's not sick. She hangs out in the box because that's her car seat. And if I don't put it in there, she'll fall out. it's that time again for another video blog from inside of my 1968 Volkswagen Fastback. Right Skeeter? Of course we got her with me. Hey? <laughs> Daddy's girl. Yes you are. Mm, you love everybody don't you? Yes you do. Let's put you back in your box. Now we keep her in a box usually um when we travel because she has a tendency to fall down from her seat and uh, land on the floor every turn that you make every time we get on the brakes or every time we get on the gas she goes tumbling she hasn't quite gotten her sea legs what the hell is going on with the seat belt uh, there we go that fixed the problem seat belt once in a while gets bunched up under the seat particularly the seat back whenever I um lift it to get to the stuff that I throw on the floor in the back area. All right. Cell phone was on my belt. It was choking me. Yeah, seat belt was really fucking pissing me off. There we go. They don't have the retractors like modern seat belts do. All right. There you go, Skeeter. <laughs> been a busy week for me. I've been off doing all kinds of stuff. I've been trying to get more YouTube videos up and I've been putting them up almost every day on all my channels. But um, I've just been busy with other things and I've forgotten a whole bunch of times. And I've got probably about a good 20 plus videos edited from things that I've shot over the last three years that I've just been uploading. And they're ready to go. I just, I keep forgetting. I just keep forgetting. I gotta get back into the, the mindset um, for uploading YouTube videos regularly again. Right, Skeeter? <laughs> so with that said, um, I'm gonna try to put this video up today. Today is Tuesday. This video, I like to get going up on uh, video blogs. This video blog video, I'd like to see going up every, every Sunday or Monday, you know, early in the week to cover my previous weekend weekend from before so I've got something fresh to talk about. Right now on my agenda is um, is um, the CR500. This is the, the biggest question that I probably get asked all the time is where is the CR500? Are you ever gonna work on the CR500? I've been watching the CR500 video for five years. When are you gonna get this thing on the road? When is it gonna be finished is the most annoying fucking question ever. It's never going to be finished. It's an ongoing project. Even when it's on the road and I'm driving it regularly, it's still not going to be done. It's just not. It's one of those projects that's going to continue to evolve. Um, originally, it started out as a CR500 engine going into an SV650 frame, and that looked really promising. It was really cool, but it was just too heavy for my taste. I didn't like it. The bike was too big. I wanted something that was lighter, a little more nimble, and a little more flickable. And I opted for the CR250 frame instead. What is this loser doing? All over the damn road in front of me. And I opted for um, uh, the CR250 frame because it was smaller. It's also a few inches shorter. So the bike is a, as a total is, is right about, I forget what the measurement was, like five and a half feet long, just under six feet long. So it's short as far as sport bikes are concerned, which again, with that shorter wheelbase will make it easier to uh, throw around the turns. I'm the big guy, and I'm always the big guy that you find on the small bikes. I have uh, <laughs> a Ninja 250 that I ride rather regularly. I've also got a um, an old Pook moped, which I enjoy. Needs some more work before I get that thing back on the road. Um, it's 
mostly electrical and brakes. Otherwise, it runs good and there's really nothing wrong with it. It just needs to be um, put back together. So the CR500 video and the Pook videos are coming up in the near future. We will get those things together. I mean, very near future. I'd like to get a CR500 update this week. So if you're not watching Duckman Cycles and you're not already subscribed to Duckman Cycles, go put a subscription over there. Um, we'll be putting up the CR500 video hopefully in the next seven days. So you'll probably be seeing something about that by about the uh, 19th or 20th of October 2014. So watch for that. Um, <clears throat> as the last update, we had it running. But in order to fix a few other things, I had to borrow some parts off of it. So I need to... Um, find new parts for the CR500 to put it back together and get it going again. I have an idea for a gas tank rather than going with the um, shoot it, these stinks. Rather than going with the um, plastic dirt bike gas tank that sat between the frames, I'm thinking of something more sport bike like you know, with a camel hump on the top of it like you find on most modern sport bikes. So that's something I'll be working on. Uh, I just gotta find the right tank and a gas cap with a matching key so I can actually open it and lock the tank at will. Right, Skeeter? <laughs> also, having a metal tank means that Skeeter can go for rides on the bike with me because her box is magnetic. It's got all magnets in the bottom of it and uh, I cling it to the metal tank with a buffer in between, uh, like a rag or something, a real thin rag. So that way if there's any, you know, grit or um, um, iron filing stuck to the magnets, it won't scratch all over that tank. So it keeps the tank in nice shape without beating it up too awfully. Uh, right now we're on the way to my bank. I've got to go uh, pay one of my credit cards, which I bought a ton of Volkswagen parts on last month. So, get in your own lane, you loser. Why the hell do people stop at a traffic light and park over the friggin' line? Why would you do that? Just why? And the other thing that gets me at traffic lights too is when people stop four or five car lengths back from the car in front of you. You know, if everybody did that, we'd be backed up a mile from one traffic light. Absolutely absurd. Right, Skeeter? Here's something else that uh, <laughs> I've come to realize that I'm driving a 50 horsepower classic car this thing has no power. I mean, this thing is, it's, it's slow. It's really slow. I think zero to 60 times is like 45 seconds. I mean, it couldn't possibly get much slower. But when I drive in traffic around Pensacola with this car, I start to realize just how slow everybody else is. If this car can outperform them, they're doing something wrong. Maybe I'm doing something right. I don't know. I mean, I'm not, you know, flooring the thing constantly, which you think you might have to with 50 horsepower, but the people on these roads are just so damn slow. It's just, it's, it's beyond annoying. It's beyond aggravating. It's, it's just, holy shit, these people are slow. So, right, Skeeter? <laughs> Skeeter is always sure to chime in. Yes, you are, aren't you? Yes. We'll see if we can find you a cheeseburger. I'm coming up to a traffic light right now. Everybody's backed up in one lane. There's two lanes. Both of them go straight. Why is everybody backed up in one lane? So very obviously, I'm going to choose the other lane and get into traffic. And now, of course, everybody slows down again. Unbelievable. This freaking mirror over here is really driving me nuts. I got to fix the uh, the side view mirror. It um, has a tendency to fold up in the wind. There's a little nut on the bottom of it that needs to be tightened, but it's really tough for me to get a wrench on it without damaging the paint. So I've been really careful on tightening it, and unfortunately I just haven't tightened it quite enough. Right, Skeeter? <laughs> now the other thing that I do when I drive, uh, whether it be motorcycle or in the car, is I try to avoid the main roads. Boy, oh boy, we're all backed up in a green light once again. This traffic in Pensacola is, is never ending. These people drive so stupid. It's just so stupid. There's only been one place that I've seen people drive worse, and that was when I lived up in Kentucky. The people in Kentucky, and I'll say most of the Midwest, Indiana, Ohio, Kentucky, and I'm sorry if you're from there, but the people there drive the worst that of anybody that I've ever seen as far as becoming a rolling obstacle or a non-moving obstacle. They just sit in the road. 
you know, they don't turn on red, I think because in those states it's illegal. So when they go to a state where it is legal, they don't know how to do it. <laughs> they just don't know how. And living in Southwest Florida, where I did for a while, um, a majority of the people there were Ohio transplants. Well, at least they were, I don't know now. It might be a little different. But um, I'd say 10 or 15 years ago, it was all people from Ohio. So everybody that was there was all driving the same way. They just, they just stop in front of you at a green light. You're just going down the road, and then for no apparent reason, brake lights come on. Why is everybody's brake lights coming on? I don't know. Hey, bird. Yeah. Daddy's good bird. We're almost at a bank, Skeeter. And I got someone in front of me now on the brakes going through a turn because it's a real graceful turn, but that's okay. We're going to go left, and we're going to avoid him going down another side street. I'm not a very fast driver, I'm not, but I like to keep my pace. You know, if the speed limit is 25, I might do 30, but I stay at 30. I'm not constantly on the brakes. You know, I'm not all, all zigzagging or weaving all over the road. I'm not speeding up, slowing down frequently. I'm not slamming on my brakes every time I come up to a speed bump. In fact, here comes a speed bump right now. You ready? Bump. Why did I have to slow down below 30 for that? Why? People here, they actually stop and look both ways when they hit a speed bump. Why are you stopping and looking both ways? Is the speed bump used for, for somebody to cross the street? Maybe maybe that's a camel crossing. That's what it is. That's what we're going to call them from now on. They're camel crossing because it goes across the road and it's a hump. So it's officially a camel crossing. The other thing that I noticed that people do... Um, and I notice this more up in, in Kentucky, Ohio area than anywhere else. Is that they teach you in driver's ed, you use hand over hand steering when you turn. Well, the people in Ohio and Kentucky and Indiana, when I see them drive, and they're gonna make, let's say, I got some metal shards here in the road. I don't wanna get those in my tires. Oh, I just ran one over. I should have picked it up, would have been good for recycling. <laughs> well, anyway, the hand-over-hand -hand steering. Um, if they're going to make a right-hand turn, they will go to the extreme left, way over the double yellow line. So all they have to do is just like that. You know, just rock the steering wheel over and make a really wide turn. Because they're too lazy to do hand-over-hand. -hand. They also change lanes in the middle of the turn, going from the inside to the outside of the turn when making a right-hand turn, for example. Or the exact opposite. If they're making a left, they'll go to the outside lane instead of the inside lane. Um, I don't know why they do that. Of course, they have to go extra slow when they do this, and they're, they're consuming a huge amount of road space, which, of course, slows all the traffic down and causes more issues, but everybody does it, except me. Always stay in my lane, especially in a turn. You know, if you're driving two right-hand turn lanes, for example, you know, God forbid you're in the lane that they're going to change into. Because in the middle of the turn, they'll crash into you. And this has happened to me, or almost happened to me many times where I've been on the motorcycle and thankfully there was enough room to give. But you know, you get on the horn and it'll stop coming over. They just come right over in the lane. And they do the same thing to me in a car. It's not like they can't see me in a car. I mean, come on. Especially with the obnoxious colors that my cars are. The bright blue, the, the red that this Volkswagen is. I mean, how do you miss it? I, I don't get it. Oh, well, we're almost to the bank. And we might turn the camera back on after that because we're also going to take a trip to the um, water company. Unfortunately, I, I forgot to um, pay my water bill last month, so I've got two of them due tomorrow. So if I don't pay them tomorrow, then they're going to shut me off sometime next week. So I'll be getting on that. All right, here we are at the bank. One way, do not enter. And of course, there's one loser that went the wrong way. See him? Right back there. Yeah, you probably can't see him. And my phone's ringing. Who could it be? And it stopped ringing as fast as it started. That's interesting. I think my phone crashed. David. Hey, David. Hello. I lost him. That was David, um, the worm, Ranch Hero 302 Me. Just coincidentally happened to be calling me while I'm in the middle of shooting videos. <laughs> All right, we got to find a place to park over here. Nobody's gonna bother me or Skeeter. Right, Skeeter? All right. Uh, 
I'd like to be under the sea in an octopus's garden in the shade. Ha. All right, we're back from in the bank, right, Skeeter? That's right. That's right. Roll your window down and give you some air. It's a beautiful morning. Beautiful morning. The temperature has dropped about 20 degrees. It's uh. Over the last couple days, the temperature was up in the mid 80s, and right now it's in the mid 60s. So <laughs> that's a hell of a difference, and it's it's beautiful. I'm really happy. Uh oh, let's try that again. There it is. These Delorto carburetors that are on this car are real pieces of shit. They don't have any chokes on them. They also have a tendency to leak. I mean, oh my God, do they leak? They leak on the inside. Um, I think I mentioned in the other video before where the previous owner had put a uh, carburetors on this car from what used to be shit from what used to be um, um, fuel injection but he left a fuel injection pump that pushes about 35 psi into the carburetor that needs about three so what does that cause it causes leaky float valves or damaging of the valve and seat and that's just exactly what happened to this set of carburetors. And, and when I change out the fuel pump to set it up the way it's supposed to be, it still, still leaks on the inside. So if you look down in the carburetor throat without the car running, it'll just drip, 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 drip. And of course, that's not good for my gas mileage. But even so, I still got about 25 miles to the gallon with the thing uh, doing that, running really rich. You can actually smell the gas in the exhaust. So I gotta take care of that before it starts um, fouling spark plugs or thinning my oil or causing the other negative things that are caused by fuel dripping excessively into the engine. Anyway, the car does pretty well. Um, I was driving it last Friday night at 90 miles an hour. <laughs> you heard that right. This little 1600 cc engine, which is uh, makes about 50 horsepower. I actually had it at 90 miles an hour on the interstate. Um, I came to a downhill and I started to go down the hill and I had a tailwind and it still wouldn't go faster than 90. That was it. 90 was all it had. And it took a while to get there. It took a couple miles before it actually got up to that speed. Anything above 70 in this car really struggles to get there. I also fixed a, a small leak that was on the uh, fuel filler neck last week and the car is about to need gas right now so when I fill that back up we'll be seeing if it leaks around that fuel filler neck and that also affected my gas mileage once I calculated how many miles I put in versus the amount of gas that was not only burnt but lost that probably adversely had affected me because you probably would lose up to a gallon of gas or maybe more from that little leak that I had, which was really slow, but overnight, I'm sure it was plenty. All right, my favorite part of town. The hardest part to drive through, over here on Davis Highway, right by the interstate. The traffic is almost always backed up over here, but it looks like it's doing pretty well today. It's actually moving. But there's about five or six traffic lights that are really short distance from each other. And it causes massive disruptions here in the traffic flow. Once I get past this, going north, the key is to stay to the right because everybody tries to go left onto either um, Olive Road or onto University Parkway. So the key is to try to stay to the right as much as you can. I'll do that right now, get over one more lane. You can probably see all the cars that are off to my left there that are all going the left direction. And when you're coming south, the same thing. Everybody's trying to go that way, so you have to stay to the left versus the right. The left lanes would be more open. So far, so good. It looks like I caught um, mostly greens. I had two reds that were just turning green. And this is the last red. This might actually be the first one I'm going to really, truly stop, stop for. I have to wait. So anyway, I stopped at the bank to pay off them Volkswagen parts, which uh, I'll probably throw an upload video on uh, Duckman Cycles today for that one. Uh, it's already been edited. I just got to get the video up there, and in the video you'll see what the Volkswagen parts are that I got. Uh, it's a lot of sheet metal and a lot of replacement bits to get that car 
it straight again and make it solid. This is the Blue 65 Beetle. This is the car that I plan to build for myself, possibly replacing my Nissan 350Z. I'm gonna make the little Volkswagen the little sports car that it always wanted to be. Damn people. And now he's gonna try to merge into my lane. You douche. He's still not over. Boy, he milked that one. Way up till the end to merge the lane. Then he's driving up the shoulder of the road, then finally he comes over. Oh, I guess I'm supposed to be over in the road, not off the road. I'm a damn moron. <laughs> right, Skeeter? Yeah. Anyway, we're almost up to the water company. I like to throw cash at them. Because they don't have an online bill pay service, it doesn't cost additional money. If there's only one thing I'm about, it's, a, it's about saving money. I don't mind taking a little road trip across town, and sometimes it's enjoyable, like taking out the old Volkswagen in, in the uh, nice cool weather. And sometimes I'll even, well most of the time, I take the motorcycle just to save on gas. And, whoa, no turn signal, nice one. Jammed on the brakes for no reason, and then suddenly throws a right hand turn at the last second. No signal. So you guys, make sure that you subscribe to VV the Duck VV, Duckman Cycles, and to Skeeter's channel, Skeeter the Duck. There she is. Oh, don't fall down, baby. I, oh, I know, I know. Let's put you down. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Who is perfectly healthy, and I'll be running a video about that on her channel, describing some of the, the myths and the stupid things that people say about her. And, um... Watch for that, so make sure you subscribe to those three channels as well as DuckTuber, my shitty channel where all my lousy videos go that don't quite make the cut to go in the mainstream channel. So go subscribe, all four channels, get them. Everybody, talk to you later. Watch for my videos next week, and uh, thanks for watching. I'm a damn moron. <laughs>